Hi, I've been recently playing around on Canva to see what some of the new features are that they've added over the last few months. Because I'm always trying to see if Canva has anything that will help make the process of designing planners and printables more efficient. And they've added, the platform is expanding. So if you haven't checked it out, there is a link for a free trial in the description area for Pro. It's 30 days. Try it out. See if you like it and if it will make your business more efficient. So if you want to see the most recent tips that I've found, stay tuned. So recently Canva has added some additional features for their shapes. So let's just say we have the square and let me start over because I already had a border on that. So we have this square and there's no border. So if you click on the border style, you can do a dashed line, a solid line, and you can do the weight. You can. So if you want a smaller, a thinner line, then if I want the inside of the square, let's say white, so that it's here, because I don't know if you remember in the past, in order to do that, it was a process. You'd have to take the square, make it really small so that the borders were thinner, and then drag that out. That's how you would have to do it before in order to get thin lines on a square. But let's say we had another shape, and we'll do a circle. We're going to do the border style and make it a little larger. And we're going to leave the, um, we're not going to make it white inside. You can use the style tool that's over here to the right. Click on style, activate the image, click on style, and then apply that style here. So you can have different shapes, but apply the same style if you were working on something. In addition, while you here, while you're here is unrelated to styles, you can also click here on the border color and choose another color for the interior of the shape. Well, now let's move down to the next feature, which is changing shapes. So let's say we have this shape. I'm sorry, we're going to bring in a square. And then I click on shape. I can actually change that shape from here to a triangle to different shapes without going back. I can just select whichever shape I want from here. Personally, I think that's a pretty cool feature. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it doesn't compete with Photoshop, but they are definitely giving you a lot more options to work with. Even if you were just playing around and you didn't really know which shape you wanted, you could just continue to click and see which work for your design, whether you're working on a printable. I'm working more with planners now. And as you create planners from scratch, maybe you want to do something for your covers or on the individual daily planner or weekly planner, fa um, I'm sorry, weekly planner page. I don't know why that was a tongue twister, but you might want to do different shapes for like to do check boxes for your meals or for your um, water intake, different things. So I think that's a pretty cool tool. Now, I somewhat covered the borders earlier, so as you have this shape, you can bring it in. Let's just say it's the circle. You can make this larger so that um, it's more visible. And then you click on the border style. So let's just say this time we're going to do a dashed line, and we're going to increase it. So you can see that as you make it larger and larger or smaller and smaller. Or you could do no border at all. Then hand shapes. So I was looking at this, trying to figure out exactly where I would use it. And the only place that I can really think of is maybe like a flow chart or something. So let's just say we added a square. And again, I'm going to do this with a border, make the color white. And then I'm going to just duplicate that. I'm just going to duplicate this by under the three dots 
and then you see duplicate. So I'm just going to make a few of them, maybe uh, one below so that we can see. So if you do this, I'm going to space this out a little bit more. And now if I use an arrow, um, don't see, oh, here it is. So let's put an arrow. So with the arrow, you can do the same thing. You can change the weight of the line. You can also make it a dash, more dashes. So you have the same option on the lines as well as the shape. I think I want a solid one on this time, but I do want it a little thicker. And then I'm going to connect it here. So when you activate this, you'll see that it turns purple. As you start to drag it, you get points on the shape itself. And then you can anchor it to that. Or if you draw down here, you anchor it to this. I'm going to actually anchor it to the middle. And now it's attached. So if for any reason I wanted to do this, you can take this and if you drag it, it stays attached to the shape itself but you can change the direction of the arrow. So like I said, I couldn't figure out where I would use this other than some type of flow chart. And as opposed to when you move this, it moves. You don't have to move them separately or group them because I think it would somewhat operate the same way as a group, but not entirely, I guess. So maybe it would, or you can change directions of this and have it connect to that. This is the only way when I saw this feature or heard about this feature that I thought I might use it. I'm not sure that I would use it on a planner, but if you were doing something that required a flow chart or a mind map or something like that, this might be useful. Next is the corner rounding. So if we go back to the square, bring it in, let's make it larger so you can see. And you click on the borders and you see here you can round the corners however even though this is all the way I don't know if you can see let me make it the border I'm gonna make this white or something that stands out and if you start to move the corner rounding you can see it go in a little bit but it's not significant so different shapes, you can round different things, but you do have the corner rounder. You can also, while you have this, make the border, the weight of the border thinner. But with planners, with the different boxes that you would do on planners, not so much printables with the customizable print, print art. So I think this would be more beneficial on a planner when you're doing maybe your top threes um, for the day or you had something where you might want to do check boxes, but there are features inside of Canva under elements that have check, check boxes. But I was thinking more of the daily and weekly planners where sometimes you have the boxes for each day of the week, or you have a box for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or your habits. I think this would be something that you could play around with and see which one was more visibly appealing for that particular design as opposed to when you try to work with some of the shapes themselves I think this new feature gives you a little bit more option you could I mean you can make the other one work but I think in this case being able to round it play around with the weight of the border the amount of rounding that you want on the shape may help you now for shapes if you remember before you'd have to do a shape Oops, sorry, let me undo that. So if you made a shape and you wanted text on it, you'd actually have to hit a T or something and add a text box to it. But now, we could delete that, you can just click and activate the box and start to type, I'm gonna change the font, so font size so that it's a little larger. And the font color so it stands out. and you can type directly inside of the box instead of adding a text box to it. So that's the text shape. Now I've played around with this feature because I thought that um, being able to flatten the PDF 
as far as printables would really help because when I work inside of Photoshop and I'm not an expert on Photoshop but when you flatten the designs it usually makes the uh, JPEG or whatever uh, that you're using PNG is smaller because when I looked into selling on Amazon KDP sometimes they'll reject it for the size of the file and if you have a lot of graphics on your cover or something like that they'll they'll suggest that you flatten the images so that they're all one and it usually changes the size of the file is smaller but when I was doing that with this PDF and I flattened the PDF it was actually larger but in flattening the PDF let's just say that you had a bunch of images so I'm gonna do um, no let me do some pictures maybe so you had a background no that's sorry that's I didn't mean to do that um, so you had a bunch of different images on a design So here you could export this as one, but sometimes when you do that and the design isn't flattened, if someone's really good with graphic designs, they may be able to manipulate your design or take the PDF and modify it. But no, when you flatten it, it becomes one image. So how you do that, if you decide to flatten the design, you would go under your download, PDF, standard or print, whichever one you're gonna use, and then you get an option to flatten it and you can download it from there now what I've noticed is because of the process of combining all the images so that when it exports as one image it does take longer I'm still confused as to why the file itself is larger but it does take longer I checked to see if you exported that let's say you're working on a planner page and you had check boxes if you would still be able to go into PDF escape and use the PDF escape to turn your checkboxes into active checkboxes and your text box if you've seen this video I will post below where I demonstrated how to make a PDF file interactive with PDF escape and you can overlay it with text boxes so that someone can actually type inside the box I checked to see if it, there was a difference between the unflattened version of the PDF and the PDF file itself and there was not so you could still use PDF escape whether you flatten the PDF or you exported it and the images were not flattened I think this find and replace if you're working on a large document like I was creating a workbook that was probably I think close to 200 pages and back in the day if you know um, not back in the day just not too long ago you could only do a hundred pages of in one design and it would max out inside of Canva so if you had a type or well, if you had a phrase that you wanted to change this wasn't there but now if you're going to file find and replace it's almost like you're in word or something else so you could find the word fine so there it is and let's say I wanted to replace it with fine and it does that or you can do I don't have multiple words in here now but if you did fine and you were doing a huge document you could say replace all you could also make it case sensitive so that you want it with an uppercase and do match the and replace so I think if you are working on a huge document maybe not so much a planner but a workbook and there's a lot of text in it and you decided to use one phrase versus something else this would be beneficial like in my case when I was working on that workbook it would have been very ben beneficial to be able to use this almost as if it was a word document where you can find and replace everything at once so like I said Canva to me is coming out with a lot of features that if you're working in the planner space some of these may be more beneficial there but even if you're doing printables with the different shapes depending on what type of printables you're making and even with this like printables aren't necessarily all focused on customizable clip art 
Some of them, if you go on Etsy, which I'm going to do a video in a couple of weeks, and you look for just the printable wall art with simple motivational phrases or what's really big as things for a children's room and nursery, you can use printables for that. And you might want to just use some shapes to add just a little dimension to the design. And then you could play around with the various features I showed you on the shapes. Now I came across this feature the other day and I don't know if I just hadn't noticed it in a while or when they added it. So if you know um, from working with Canva, you've always been, if you activate the document, let me move this over, you can lock it in place. But the other day I noticed that they were here too. And I'm thinking that I just snooze, like when did that actually come? But if you see here, it says only allow replacing content. So while this lock is locking the background, if you do this, it now has locked these into place. So if you're working on a planner, I think this would, I'm going to try it out. I'm working on a huge planner and I think this would really work well. Everything's in place and it's not just the background. The text boxes are too. So it allows you to override the text. But you don't have to worry about the text box box moving. So there are two separate ones. When you do, when you activate here, you can unlock it. That's locking the background. That's unlocking the text. So now when you unlock it, hold on one second. You can unlock it here. I'm not sure why it's not working. Just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. I couldn't get it to unlock. Now you can move everything around. You can move the text box around. But the other way, when you click up here, it'll only lock the text box that holds it in place. If you click the background, you click over there, the background is locked in place. So I think that will work well because in the past, you could lock different things, but I don't remember being able to separate the two like that. So this isn't, I'm using planners as an example, but you can use this feature for anything. So if I open, I'm looking for planners, I'm searching for something, trying to get some inspiration on something I'm designing. And then I'm, I like the colors on this. I click on it to activate it and it opens in a new window. And I'm like, okay, I really like the style of this. I can go back here. I can put it, I can put the star on it, which means it'll go into my like folder. So I don't have to look for that again if I choose to use this. Or I could use the three dots and see that I can customize this particular planner myself. Now, the only thing if you choose to do that, you cannot sell Canvas um, templates. You can use them for personal things, but you cannot sell them as your own and even if you modify them a little bit you can't do that okay so now we're here on this planner and I really like these colors I might like these styles so I'm making I'm working on a planner maybe and I'm thinking about just making it more cutesy and not so much all squares and lines like these over here I'm like okay I like this designer style and I want to see more of their work you can click on the three dots and it shows who the designer is here and if you click on this off to the side, it'll bring up their other designs. Like I kind of like this one right here. And you can see that it's kind of just an artsy, playful type designs. So if you wanted some inspiration, you like all of their work. If you activate the three dots, let's go back, close this go back down here and you see something else. Maybe you do want to work on something that looks more traditional and might be appealing to more people than not. You can say, oh, I like this style. Now this one has multiple pages in it, all 12 months. So, or you can go back, you like the style, you click on the three dots, here's the creator, the designer, and you can apply that. And these are the other things that they have to offer. So they have a weekly planner, they have a monthly planner and a different version of the weekly planner. So if you like their style, this particular person only has three, but sometimes people have been working on here for a while and it's a lot to choose from. I use this more to draw inspiration 
and because since I can't sell um, canvas templates I don't really use them to work on I just use them to get inspiration for my own design and the last thing that was great news to me is did you know Canva now allows 200 pages per design like I said for I have a workbook that is 140 something pages and I actually am in the process of redesigning it for fourth quarter and this is going to be a great help for me because in the past I had to do it in two separate documents then export it and I have a program that I use I love PDF and I combine the two PDF files together but now that they've expanded the one document can have up to 200 pages that will help me a lot and if you work in Canva creating workbooks as opposed to not just planners, it is a great addition to the platform. So I hope you found these uh, tips helpful in Canva. Like I said, the amount of new features they are constantly adding to, I'm going to call it the software, is very benef beneficial and it's affordable. I have the plan that's $12.95 a month. I did start out on the free plan. And as I mentioned before, there is a link in the description if you're interested in trying it out. Especially as fourth quarter approaches, we're in August now. You should be, if you're going to sell fourth quarter, whether you're working on planners, printables, whatever, finalizing your designs. And I've done a video on this before. Uh, Canva offers a feature for um, folders. So if you've seen that to help organize your designs, what I would suggest if you use the features for my customized, customizable clip art, I have a folder for each vendor that I buy um, designs for. And if I'm buying different designs, like sometimes they have summer, winter, I label it that and I separate those by the type of designs that are in there. And it just helps me to manage when I'm working on different um, illustrations that I'm just playing around with how this jacket might work with that jacket because I mix elements from different in addition to my um, clip art that I sell myself I use other vendors and so I mismatch the design so I play around with different things but I keep the designs organized in folders and you can set up your folders beforehand and let me just um, and as you start to approach fourth quarter get yourself in a way that you can operate efficiently I've done a video on that too. I'll post the link in the description below. And so if you have any questions about, um, or if you know some things like help a sister out <laughs> that you use Canva for that you maybe haven't seen if you've watched some of my other tips and tricks Canva videos, please share because I'm always looking at Canva, just playing around thinking what can make my life easier. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I've taken my printables out of my shop for the time being because they require a lot of hands-on and I'm trying to get my shop more automated. So I'm looking at doing still printables, but more wall art with quotes, motivational things, and I may include some shapes. So that's why I was showing the different features on shapes. And that's how I came across it because I noticed the new menu item when I activated it. And that's just, and that's very passive income. You can't sell them for as much um, per design, but you could create bundles to, re to increase the value of the purchase or as passive. So once you create it once, you just put it on autopilot and let it sell. So I hope that helps you. I'll see you in the next video. I'm working on the Etsy beginner shop. So if you sell your printables on Etsy, or if you're just getting started, I am working on a series for that. So as I've mentioned before, place a comment in the below for tips for Etsy beginners and just put hashtag tips for Etsy beginners and with your questions or things that you would like covered. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.